Hi everybody, welcome to video number 26 in the UE5 vehicle tutorial series. Now in the last few videos I've showed you how to uh, create the color picker, how to make it affect the color of the vehicle you have selected in three different slots. I'll show you how to save it so that this, uh, this data gets transferred to the game instance and then into the actual game when you hit play. And now I am going to show you how to save that into a save slot so that when you exit the game and come back to it, your uh, custom colors are still going to be present. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's go into your content folder. We want to right click, create a new blueprint class. Look for save game. There you go. <coughs> Let's call it uh, vehicle underscore save game. To be consistent with all of the other classes in here. Let's also open the main menu UI. UMG main menu. Go into the graph. And you want to add a variable to the save game that is identical to the inventory you use in the main menu, basically. So adding a variable, let's call it vehicle underscore inventory. <coughs> let's make it an array of struct vehicle item, same as in the menu. And let's click here this little icon to make it an array. And it's okay to leave it empty because the first thing we're going to do when opening the main menu is to check whether we have a, same ga a save game or not. And if we don't, we'll create one and we'll populate it with all the uh, default values that are in the main menu. So we don't actually need to redo the whole array here like we did in the menu, thankfully. <laughs> So back into the main menu here, let's go into the event graph, here event construct. Uh, for those of you wondering, I didn't really mention this, event construct would be uh, the equivalent of event big and play, and pre-construct would be like the uh, construction script. Pre-construct here is executed in the editor. And I've had, uh, I've had issues with that in the past, where I was uh, using the uh, pre-construct to call functions that needed a subsystem to be enabled, but it was enabled in the game and not in the editor. So now whenever I was opening the uh, content browser, the event pre-construct here was triggered on those widgets and the engine would crash. And I wasn't able to open the content browser anymore to open those widgets to fix that. And so be very careful what you do here in the event pre-construct. Same as the uh, construction script on a blueprint. Like I mentioned in the last video, it is very easy to uh, break your, your project using those. So let's go ahead and use the uh, event construct. Before I do any of this, I will be handling the save game. So first thing to do is to check whether or not we have a save slot. So does whoops does save game exist? I will give it a slot name here. That's going to be a hard-coded as we call it. We're not going to give the option to the player to create a new game and load it with buttons in the menu because that's going to be a whole tutorial of its own. Right now we're just going to create a uh, save slot just to be able to use it basically. And we'll call it vehicle save. Okay. Now add a branch here.
Now, if it's true, meaning the uh, save game does exist, we are going to load game from slot. The slot name, again, will be vehicle save. Uh, we're going to have to type in that slot name in quite a few places. And so if you ever want to change it, you're going to have to change it in many places. And you might be prone to forgetting at least one or two of these. So we'll, we'll create a variable. You know, we'll do the right thing. Promote the variable. And the uh, slot name is fine, I guess. Oops. And so now if you ever want to change the uh, slot name, you only have to change it in one place, which is which is good. Okay, now that we've loaded the game from slot, we have to cast it to our... Why am I actually writing what I'm saying? We need to cast it to our uh, save game class that we just created. And use that to promote to variable. as vehicle save game. Let's make it a little shorter. Just vehicle save game is fine. And then what we yeah, what we want to do is we want to get the strut from the save game. So it was vehicle inventory if I recall properly. And we want to set the vehicle inventory here in the menu to be the one from the save game. Now we will have to change this again later. Convert uh, convert both of these arrays to maps because at some point we will want the player to have to unlock the vehicles and so the player vehicle inventory won't have all the vehicles in it. And we're gonna want to leave the uh, vehicle intact, the vehicle inventory intact in the main menu, and just use the save slot to uh, apply all of these settings here instead of using the actual vehicle inventory from the UMG uh, for the main menu. But uh, again, that's its own tutorial. So right now we're just going to do that. And here, if we don't have a uh, save file, we're going to create one. <coughs> create save game object. We're going to select our vehicle save game here. We are going to promote it to a variable. Uh, what am I doing? <laughs> we have a variable right here. Vehicle save game. Now we don't need to cast it because creating the save game here it already knows the uh, save game class that we're using so we don't need to have a cast here. And then what we want to do is the exact opposite of this here. So we want to set vehicle inventory to the one from the main menu so it's not empty. Great. And then you want to keep going here. And now all that's left to do is to save the vehicle inventory from the UMG main menu into the save game every time we apply the, uh, the changes to the customization. <coughs> button save customization that is great now we want to grab our vehicle save game here again set vehicle inventory to be the the most up-to-date really so you can see here we get the uh, main menu vehicle inventory 
and we're setting the variables for the vehicle that we just uh, were customizing. And so that's the one here that we want to save into our save slot. And uh, unless I'm missing something, that would be it. So let's try that right away. Okay, now you can see I don't have a save slot, so it is using the default, which is red. Let's just test it. So just one color, save it. You can see it was saved. Let's leave the game and come back to it. All right, not working. I knew this was going too well. Oh, oh yeah, of course. I've set the uh, <laughs> I've set the inventory inside inside of the uh, the save game variable. I haven't actually saved it to slot. So save game to slot. The slot name variable again. And uh, now that should work a lot better. Let's go ahead and do that again. Ah, there it is. That's it. You're done. <laughs> now you can customize your car all you want. Or at least the colors for now. Because that's all we've uh, implemented. Oh, I think we broke something. Oh, no, never mind. Sorry. Phew, got scared a bit. So now you can customize your uh, your vehicle color. You can save it. You can leave the game, come back to the game, and still have your colors. And uh, do, 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 do. let me check something. Well, actually, let me let me play here. Good. Okay, it's working. I was uh, I was worried maybe we were setting the game instance vehicle before actually loading the save game, but uh, I just remembered loading the save game is what we do first. So yeah, there you go. So we set the vehicle inventory here to be the one from the save game before we actually set the uh, game instance. No, nope, we don't need that anymore. And so if you followed the uh, four or five previous tutorials perfectly, you now have a uh, color customization system. Ta-da! All of this work for just that. It's pretty crazy, right? What was it, like five hours of tutorial just to be able to change the color of your car in the menu? And have it saved and applied properly and all that? <laughs> oh, you just have to love it. Vehicle or any, any sort of customization and player inventory is quite a bit of a nightmare, if I might say so myself. Well, you know, after you've done it once, you're good. Like, you'll see it'll go a lot more smoothly from now on. Because now, you know, whenever we need to add more customization options, all we have to do is really open the strut, add whatever variable here that we want to be able to modify, go to the menu, you know, add a button, a slider, a text box, whatever, and then just go into the vehicle construction script and make sure that we actually use that value for something. And that's it. Now the, the bulk of the work is done. The the actual back end, you know, it's all it's all behind us now. It's over. So now we can start having fun actually with the uh, the vehicle customization. <laughs> and that is it for this video. I think that was a pretty short one, finally. 
So I hope you enjoyed it. Again, thanks for watching. I will see you very soon in the next video.